Hi, I'm Zedlo. Chances are if you're watching this, you're already an artist and you don't need anybody with a ponytail to tell you how to make art. This is not how to be an artist because you're already an artist if you're watching this video. You might not think you are, but you are. A better title for this might be how to progress as an artist in 10 steps, but I don't think anyone would find it. I've always loved art and I've always loved drawing, but I never really considered myself an artist. It was just something I did as a hobby. About two years ago, I started really getting serious about art. I started drawing every day and I started cultivating an art Instagram account. I've grown that account to over a thousand followers and that account, I'll tell you, it's a real lifeline for me socially during the pandemic. So this is my video on how to become an artist in 10 steps. Step one, set aside time for art. You have to make time for art. Art's not gonna make time for you and your schedule is not gonna open up a bunch of gaps for you to fill with art. And even if those spots in your schedule do appear, you're probably gonna look at memes. So take some time off to turn off your screens, sit down with a piece of paper and get into the nitty gritty of art, which is doing it. That's the hardest part of art is doing it. You have to remember that the longer you spend on something, the better it will be. It's a law of nature. It's what I learned in college, that even if I had a crappy paper, if I spent three hours on it, it's gonna be good. You have to spend the time working on the art. Don't bang something out in 15 minutes and then call it good. Now I do have to talk about posts that perform versus posts that don't perform. It's almost impossible to tell what people are gonna like and what people are not gonna like. But at the end of the day, I know that the post I spent three hours making that got five likes, it, if I'm happy with it, it's worth it. For the case study for this tip, I picked these two book illustrations I did. When I got here in August, I didn't have a lot of stuff to fill my schedule. So I started giving myself projects and themed illustrations to do. And this week I picked book covers. So here we have The Old Man in the Sea and The Devil Wears Prada. I'm gonna let you guess which one performed better. Step two, follow rabbit trails. Don't limit yourself to, oh, I have to do this, or oh, I have to do that. It's not a job and no one's paying you yet. This is not a job where an employer is telling you what to do. So take advantage of that. If you want to draw bicycles for a week, draw bicycles for a week. No one's stopping you. In fact, if you draw bicycles for a week, chances are you're gonna get into some kind of shape or shadow study. You might get really good at drawing circles. As long as you're putting the time into it and letting yourself think freely and creatively, it's gonna turn out good. This summer I kind of got into hands before my accident. I decided to draw 10 hands every day. Eventually I used elements for that study in this book cover, The Giver, and now I can pretty much draw hands from scratch if push comes to shove. No practice is wasted practice, basically is what I'm saying. And there's no art police that are gonna pull you onto track. By the way, this is excellent advice if you have ADHD, because once you get out of the headspace that Oh, I need to draw a certain way. I need to draw only this topic. I need to draw stuff I can post every day. Once you break free of that, your creative brain goes crazy. And then you start to create more content that you can work with. You're really doing yourself a favor. Follow rabbit trails. Step three is a hard one. Accept criticism. I hate this one. This is the one I hate the most. I can't even emotionally cope when someone corrects my grammar. How am I supposed to cope when they correct my lines and shapes? You have to remember that people giving you their advice that's not their job. It's nobody's job to tell you how to draw. I could draw a big circle on a piece of paper every day and post it to Instagram for my whole life. It's no one's job to tell me that I should start drawing something else. What you draw is your job and your responsibility. But keep in mind what's best for you. And even though it might be annoying, and even though it's not their job, sometimes they've got good insight. Sometimes, not all the time. Sometimes they have good insight. And when you can tell that they have a good idea, incorporate it. If someone gives me advice at this point, I'll probably incorporate it if I think that it's a good idea. And remember that at the end of the day, if you take the advice and you work with it, that's still your work. It's something you can be more proud of, basically. Yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. Number four is gonna look kind of like it contradicts number three. Number four is kick cooks out of the kitchen. It's your kitchen. And remember that it's not other people's job to tell you what to do. If you accept criticism, you're gonna be better off, flat out. I'll tell you that right now. You'll be better off if you accept criticism. Your work will be better because sometimes you're too close to the problem to see it. Other people are not as close to your work as you. Your work is like your baby. You wanna protect it. You don't want anybody else to tell you how to do it but other people can see problems that you can't. So mental health note, I'm not telling you that you should listen to everything other people say. I am telling you that if you do listen to what they say, you will get better. Okay, so let's go to number four. Kit cooks out of the kitchen, it's your kitchen. And while many people have good advice on how you can change your work or what you should be doing differently or 
oh, if it was me, I would have done this. While there's a lot of good you can gain from that, it's also great to know your limits. Know what you want, and you'll get a stronger instinct as you go along. But I've had people tell me, you should do it like this. Use these colors, use these shapes. You should change the lighting to this, change the formatting. And sometimes I just say, no. And that works because you know what's good for your art at the end of the day. If you don't know what's good for your art, figure that out because that's going to go far. You have to have a vision of how you want your art to look. You have to have a style. You have to have something to go on. I've been told to sketch anatomy and get good at shapes and stuff. That's correct. I'll probably sketch anatomy in the future. But for now, I know what I want is less about perfection and more about shape and line. I feel like that's me and it works for me. You don't owe anybody anything. Okay, number five is almost as hard as number three, and that is practice daily. It can be really hard, like I said, to carve out time for art, even harder to carve out time for art daily. You'll always have something more important to do. Chores, job, school, eating. But if you do five minutes every day, that's gonna be much better than 25 minutes once a week. You're gonna get better work. And it's about that principle I talked about, where if you spend more time on something, it will be better. If you do something every day, there's a sort of rule of consistency where it will get slowly better and better incrementally than if you pick up your art supplies and do a big lesson once a week. Sketch every day. Sketch on the train, sketch in class. When I taught English, I would sketch while I was teaching. So this tip is just work hard every day. I've done times when I posted something every day. I've done times when I just sketched every day. I've done times when even the tiniest little picture of a house in the margin of my notes, that counted as a day of work for me. Just try to do something every day. And the more you do it every day, the more time you'll find that you have to do. Okay, number six, we're gonna study light. Look at how shadows fall. Look at how light works. Look at how you can do shadows in different colors other than just black and gray. Um, see what bounce lighting does. Think about morning light versus evening light versus moonlight versus noon light. Something I learned early on is that if your shapes are a mess, if your lines are out of whack, if your proportions are awful, if the light looks good, it'll look good. If the light is falling realistically, it'll look real. Okay, I'll give you some examples. I stopped using black for shadows and I started using dark blue. If your shadows are black, it's some dramatic time of day, like noon or evening. If your shadows are a soft blue, it just softens the whole picture. So blue shadows are nice. Morning and evening light is kind of like a peach, probably closer to tangerine. Um, midday light is white. Computer light is blue. Um, if someone is, if someone's face is in shadow, chances are they'll have like a trace of light around the edge of them because of the way our faces are shaped. Just start looking at light. Okay, this brings us to number seven. Copy, steal, plagiarize, whatever you want to call it. Copy, copy, copy. If you go to an art museum, you'll probably see artists copying artwork. I'm assuming that's how people used to learn how to do art. It's definitely how I learned to do art. There's this great book, Steal Like an Artist. This book basically says, steal. This summer I did a study where I basically just took famous photographs and recreated them. And I got a lot of good work out of that. Nothing I can really publish because of copyright, but it teaches you stuff. If you make the same brush strokes as a famous artist did, that's one step closer to being as good as them. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. Not everything you do has to be creative. Not everything you do has to be postable. You can steal some stuff. Can you put it on a t-shirt? No, but you can put it on your resume. Don't build your whole career around copying famous artwork. It's a place to learn. And then you move on from that and you get better. And then you start creating your own creative stuff. And then you start making your own content. And of course, it's going to have hints of what you learned it from. Every artist is derivative, but if you're doing it right, it's a starting point. Number eight, engage in craft. What the heck does that mean? Get into the physical aspect of art. It's not all about lines, colors, and shading. It's about what pen do you use? What kind of ink? Is it waterproof ink? Is it non-waterproof? Do you use a fountain pen? What's the size of your nib? What's the weight of the paper? Is it watercolor paper or printer paper? What's the GSM? What's your water to paint ratio? What's the best position for sitting down to draw? What kind of pens are waterproof? What kind of pens should you avoid watercolor with? I think the day that I started worrying about my materials and what materials to use was the day I really started to take myself seriously as an artist. The fact that I could go to the store and know that I wanted a Mitsubishi UM-153 pen, it gave me such a feeling of confidence and feeling like I knew what I was talking about. Number nine, share. It's okay to want some attention. For me, this was Instagram. 
if you go if you scroll all the way to the bottom of my Instagram feed, you'll find pictures of pineapple in Taipei 101. Because when I started Zudlo, I thought it was going to be a travel blog. I really did. I thought I was going to be a famous travel blogger. It turned out to not be that. It pretty quickly became all about art. When you start out, there is kind of a rush in seeing strangers like what you're making. So find a platform to share on. It could be DeviantArt, Tumblr, Instagram, Facebook, and it doesn't have to be public. But you came here to hear my advice. My advice is go public. I don't want to say the point of art is to be shared, but the point of art is to be shared. There is art therapy. That's valid. But if you want to know my top 10 tips for being an artist, it helps to go public. The other thing is when you go public, you get over that timidness of sharing your art, partially from falling on your face so much. But eventually sharing your art becomes a joy. It's not something you have to force yourself to do. In fact, you can't wait to share what you've made. I think the positive feedback just builds up your confidence, which builds up your inspiration and your drive to do more. 80% of what we do is for human connection. So if you can build that human connection element into your art, if you can find a people why to make your art, I really think it puts you on a good track. Find people who are encouraging. Have like an inner circle of artists. If you have a mentor who's consistently critical of your art, it will make you a better artist, fact. It'll also make you depressed. You need to keep your spirits up. And to do that, sometimes you do need a crowd of people who will always be on your side and always be your fam. And you'll find that a lot of the artist community is gonna encourage you. I, th I would say, I would say in my experience, a good portion of them are gonna support you. So find people to share with. Number 10, tell yourself who you are. I'm an artist, say it a couple times. Like, get used to saying that. Be an artist, be proud of what you are. Two years ago, I was kind of in a rough patch. I'd fallen into the expat life and I was doing the English teaching and then going hiking and then eating the Taiwanese food. And I guess I was kind of lost. And then it more came around to me focusing on my identity. And that identity has always been artist for my whole life, but I never really took it seriously. I always thought it was something I could do on the side. And now art is what I do mainly. And then I work on the side. If I spend 40 hours a week working and I draw for 10 hours a week, I can still classify the working as something I do to support my art. So play with your identity. Start to ask yourself who you are. And the answer is gonna be, I'm an artist. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.